So today I wanted to talk to you guys about atomic swaps and more specifically Monero and Bitcoin atomic swaps and what it means for Monero and the regulation around Monero in the future of Monero. So what are atomic swaps? If you haven't heard of them, basically what an atomic swap is, is it allows you to transact between one currency and another in cryptocurrencies um, in a trustless fashion. So basically, if you're using something like a decentralized exchange or maybe some sort of standalone client, um, you can find somebody who wants to sell you um, X amount of Bitcoin for X amount of Monero. And you can just swap peer to peer just like that. Just like, let's say you're on the street with somebody and they have 10 euros and you have ten dollars and you just want to exchange that i know that's not the right conversion rate but just for simplicity you just do that peer-to-peer -peer, right that's basically what it is what it means is that monero can't really be regulated anymore once this stuff gets made so the main way that regulation against monero would work is through centralized exchanges because it's like a choke point, right? Like if you have to go to a website like Kraken.com in order to uh, transact Monero or a website like Coinbase to transact Monero and there's no other way to do that to convert from Bitcoin to Monero or anything like that, then the government could just come down and crack down on all these exchanges and say, oh, you're not allowed to list Monero, which by the way, Kraken does have Monero listed. There's no loss at this moment in time saying that you can't have Monero listed on your exchange or anything. It's mostly exchanges that um, refuse to list privacy coins. I think they're just scared. They're just worried that the government's going to come down and impose some sort of legislation when they actually haven't, which is honestly just kind of being a pussy about it, if you ask me. Anyway, um, when these things get finished, it's going to allow us to convert from Bitcoin to Monero or Monero to Bitcoin trustlessly, peer to peer, no centralized exchange, no point of regulation, nothing. And that's big. That's huge. Because this is a big thing that people have against Monero is regulation is going to come in and kill it. It's the same arguments that they had against Bitcoin in the early days. The government will never let that thing survive. They'll just shut it down. They'll they'll cause it to be completely useless. They'll regulate the shit out of it. They'll do this. They'll do that. Whatever. You know? And I think that's something that, that's actually kind of ironic because Bitcoin had to go through the same thing. And now Monero's having to go through it. So here's one of the Atomic Swaps implementations. There's three different implementations at the moment that are being worked on. This is one of the teams. It was done through a community crowdfund through the Monero CCS. If you don't know what this is, um, definitely check it out. People have all kinds of projects that they say they want to do like this. Translations, bullets, proofs, plus audit, um, more coding, whatever. Um, very very great thing I think Monero has. It allows community crowdfunding of different parts of Monero to be worked on. Um, so back to the atomic swaps. This is one of the proposals. I mean, this is one of the groups working on it. Um, they have a whole thing here. You can read through if you want. Just go to this uh, link here. Very interesting. Look through it. Um, the second one is Commit Network. They actually made this post on Reddit about two weeks ago. Um, they've actually got it working on testnet Monero and testnet Bitcoin, which is very exciting. That means they're pretty close. There's obviously still some things they need to work out. It's not good for prime time yet, but something exciting to think about. There's a third one too that I just can't remember off the top of my head, and honestly, I'm too lazy to go look up who it is, but they are also working on it. So we have three independent groups working on this all at the same time so the chance of this getting through is pretty high of this happening um, if you want to um, hear more about the commit network implementation uh, monero talk actually interviewed one of the guys that is i'm not really sure if he's part of the team or what but there you go you can go ahead and check that out 
Monero Talk also is just a great all around educator with Monero. He's got interviews on all kinds of different people with Monero. Arctic Mine, check out the ones with Arctic Mine. This guy's very good. He talks about the um, dynamic block size and tail emission in this one. If you're uh, if you're at all uh, interested in that, I know I had some comments on some of my other videos about um, how the block size would, I mean, how the transaction fee would actually be decreased um, the more people that use Monero. He actually talks about it in this video, so check that out. Um, Lee Claggett, he's also another uh, Monero contributor. So yeah, you can go ahead and look through this. There's so many. He's got so many videos. Such a great resource. So yeah, um, you know, this is the thing when it comes to cryptocurrencies and regulation and stuff. It's that this stuff is impossible to regulate. Um, the people who create this stuff that are really on top of their game are always going to be one step ahead of the regulators. You know, the people who are interested in this stuff, they're always looking for ways to get around, not get around regulation, but get around the um, ability to be regulated to begin with. Right, so that regulation can never even be a problem to begin with. You know, and I, I really do believe that cryptocurrencies, and specifically ones that are private, are going to be the future. I think that, you know, this is technology, right? And technology always comes with pros and cons. Yes, the pros of Monero are great, you know, privacy for the individual. It's awesome. You know, we had that with cash. We've been losing that for decades, and now we hear, we're getting it back with Monero. But with the, the bad side of that is uh, there's going to be crime that's done with this stuff, right? And I don't want to just say that that's not going to happen. It's definitely going to happen, just like crime happens with cash today, you know? But there's always going to be people in society that commit crime. And there's always going to be people in society that are not committing crimes. Not necessarily every crime is bad, because I definitely don't think that either, but... It's just one of these things that you have to think about, right? Where, you know, the printing press came out um, and it toppled the Catholic Church. Um, the Catholic Church had the monopoly on information, on faith, on everything until the printing press came out. And then people were able to get educated on their own and read and become enlightened. You know, that's what caused the Enlightenment. Or one of the causes and uh, you know what was it it was technology the internet did the same thing that the internet changed society it it took a lot of power away from um, power structures and because uh, the propaganda machine can't be as strong in some ways in some ways it can information is decentralized with the internet right now this is decentralizing money Money is a foundational part of society, right? Um, money's been controlled by the central banks for ever. Um, central banks use that power to fund wars and destruction and whatever their agendas are. And this is not possible with something like Monero, with something like Bitcoin. And don't get me wrong, Bitcoin has its problems. It's traceable. You know, but it's still a step up from what we have right now, I think, just simply because it takes the power away from these people. One more thing I want to mention that I completely forgot to mention earlier was uh, when you're converting from Bitcoin to Monero, you'll have absolutely no issues at all with these atomic swaps. However, when you're going the other way, I feel like there might be an issue. I think the issue could be that you swap your fungible, completely untrackable, completely, you know, unknowable Monero for Bitcoin that is the opposite of all of that. It's completely traceable. Um, everybody can see the history. And what if you swap it for some coins that were used in some shady stuff that were used on a dark net market or something? You know, that's something to be careful of. That's something to be worried about. And I guess it'll remain to be seen, you know, how much of a factor that's actually going to be. But I don't know. Um, I really don't know. It might only be a one-way 
um, from Bitcoin to Monero, or at least primarily from Bitcoin to Monero, even though the capability will be going both ways, just simply because of that fact. So yeah, um, that's about it. Um, hope you learned something, and uh, share this with your friends if you feel like they uh, would learn something too. So thank you.